travesty to appropriate more than allotted when the poor freezing soldiers could not have blankets and he swore he would never approve the bills but instead he would pay out of his own pocket which he did <laughs> finally during his first term in office lincoln had to let go to let him go his first cabinet member simon cameron who was secretary of war he served only a year before resigning amidst a corruption investigation during the early phases of the Civil War. Cameron allowed his friends to sell shoddy and inferior equipment to the military, paper-thin blankets, tents with holes, guns that wouldn't fire, at full price. President Lincoln asked Cameron to resign, and then he was effectively exiled by making him the ambassador to Russia. <laughs> President Reagan had his fair share of problems in his administration that rocked the White House. As you may recall, he, he was not always popular. His, his you know, first term and second term, he was not always popular, and the media was never good to him either, especially as he is today. I think history has done him well. But the most well-known and politicized, politically damaging scandal was when President Reagan conceded that the United States had sold weapons to Iran as part of a largely unsuccessful effort to secure the release of six U.S. hostages being held by Lebanon. It was also disclosed that some of the money from those armed deals with Iran had been covertly and illegally funneled into a fund aided to the Contras, to aid the Contras, seeking to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. The Iran Contra affair, as it became known. In the end, 14 administration officials were indicted. 11 convictions resulted, including Secretary of Defense Caspar Weinberger, John Poindexter, Oliver North. Those indicted or convicted were all pardoned in the final days of the George W. Bush presidency. And then there was that, the grant rigging at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. I think we heard that recently, HUD? Yeah. Yeah. HUD Secretary Samuel Pierce and his associates, associates rigged low-income housing bids to favor Republican contributors to Reagan's campaign, as well as rewarding Republican lobbyists, such as James Watts, Secretary of the Interior, who was indicted on 24 counts. A total of 16 convictions were eventually handed down because of the HUD scandal. <laughs> lobbyists were taken out to the woodshed for a beating during the Reagan years. The, ru the rule is that when an administration staff member leaves office, Federal law governs how quickly one can begin a lobbying career. You may recall that even a Reagan chief of staff, Michael Deaver, was convicted of lying to both a congressional committee and to federal grand jury about his lobbying activities after he left government. He received three years probation and was fined $100,000. A number of scandals occurred at the Environmental Protection Agency as well. Over 20 high-level EPA employees were removed from office during Reagan's three years as president, including Ann Gorsuch Buford, Buford, director of the EPA, who was found guilty and in contempt of Congress. And then the last situation I'll bring up was the savings and loan crisis, in which 747 institutions failed and had to be rescued with $160 billion taxpayer dollars. Five senators, which we know is the Keating Five now, were all caught up in the crisis when they tried to help a local Cincinnati and Charlie Keating. Of these five senators, Senator John McCain and Senator John Glenn were the only two to get reelected. However, every year a Gallup poll asks the public, who do you regard as the greatest United States president? Lincoln and Reagan are always one and two, sometimes three, but one, two, and three. And there are obvious reasons why Lincoln and Reagan are considered the greatest American presidents. Irrelevant of, of what the media reported or scandals that occurred when they were in office. Lincoln and Reagan were both masters, speech masters, of making a clear message with good vision. Lincoln reunited the country and abolished slavery while dealing with the Civil War, where 700,000 Americans died. More died in the Civil War than all the wars since. Reagan advocated Reaganomics, which called for a reduction in taxes as a means to stimulate the economy. And he ended the Cold War, 
with the Soviets, the most enduring crisis of the post-World War II era. Now someday in the future, maybe we may find that Trump is also considered one of the greatest presidents, because maybe he will bring peace to the Korean continent. And maybe through his tax reforms, economic incentives, repatriation of billions of dollars in overseas corporate money, and new bilateral trade agreements, he will bring on the largest economic expansion the U.S. has ever seen. Now, before I uh, turn it over to our uh, to our uh, master chaplain, Les Pierce, or Les Sanders, um, I want to give you a little story. Two more minutes. Bear with me. But there was a uh, frugal a frugal Dutch painter who got a contract to paint a Catholic church in Milan, Italy. This was back in the 1800s. And he realized that um, to do this, this painting of the outside of the church, it was going to take about 50 gallons of paint. And because he was a frugal Dutch, he decided that you now I can maybe buy 35 mm -hmm. gallons of paint, put 15 gallons of paint thinner in there and get this done and make a little more money. So he got the contract and began to paint that church. At the end, when he finished up, it began to rain. It began to rain. And all of a sudden, that paint just started coming down the outside of that wall. And pretty soon, the rain stopped, the sun came out. Out comes the father, looks around, looks inside of the building, and he said, uh, repaint, repaint, and thin no more. <laughs> I'll leave it up there. Thank you for 